Hey, everybody. I am super excited here, and I want to welcome you all first and foremost to Business Insights with Matt Milia. And I'm really excited because I have a bit of a, I would say, a celebrity here and a legend <laughs> and someone who's had that. <laughs> and someone who's had a very similar background as I've had. And mm -hmm. uh, I want to go a little deeper into that. But before we do, first, I'm going to go ahead and cue here my intro. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now stay tuned for our podcast. All right. What's up, Chris? How are you? Good, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pumped to talk. I love the opening video. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. uh, appreciate that. Well, uh, so for everyone who has been living under a rock or they just don't know, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's, I actually feel like a very, very, very small percentage of people know me, but you know, it's always humbling when people introduce me that way. I just always feel like I'm in startup mode. You know, I have four best selling business books and, I, and, you know, I have a pretty large following on social have started an Inc 500 fastest growing company have done inside sales for two billionaires and a billion dollar company helped a couple startups get acquired. Uh, it's just been a fun journey. I worked at realtor.com, worked at top producer and, you know, obviously where we met, uh, we, you know, we weren't on the same team. We weren't super buddies, but we were at Quicken loans at the same time. Right. And, you know, anybody that has read the conversion code or followed my stuff, th that experience was highly influential, educational, inspirational, hard, <laughs> like, and doing that really made me feel good about going to these other, whether it's real estate agents or companies and saying, hey, here's a really good way to do it because these guys are good. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's been a fun journey. And my new book just came out. That's why we're chatting. The Conversion Code Part 2. Uh, it's about, you know, this idea of not chasing leads and instead attracting clients because, you know, you and I came from the boiler room. That's still a big oh, yeah. part of what your business does right now. And it's still a big part of how the world works today. But at the same time, there are challenges and you know them and I know them. And uh, for a lot of people, they'd rather outsource it or, or not do it themselves because, you know, yeah. that dialing for dollars like we did for so many leads and so many months and days and hours is hard hundred percent. But see, what's great about what you do is the fact that you're offering, I mean, on Amazon, I mean, I, I found for, for $23, I believe is mm -hmm. what it is, which yeah. is a steal of a deal because I've actually, I've read the first conversion code and it was phenomenal. And even with us having very similar backgrounds, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and and the funny thing is, is still to this day, I train my guys up on ARP, ARC, which yeah. I know, I know where that came from because we yeah. both had, and I was like, someone else is training on this and That's they right. know about it. So mm -hmm. there's so many, there's so many things that we as business owners, as trainers, as mentors, as entrepreneurs, we take for granted. And we sometimes mm -hmm. just forget about going back to those basics. And for $22, they can essentially have a, a, just a wealth of knowledge right at their fingertips. What was it though that motivated the, you know, the conversion code? And then what made you decide to, you know, make the, the second variation of it? Yeah. Well, I went from the boiler room in my early career and then I started doing social video, blogging, Facebook, YouTube, well before most people, you know, 2008, 2009, you know, and it was just the early days, the wild west. And, and for some people it still is. And now you have web three and there's sort of a wild west there happening. But 
I, when I started doing marketing, content marketing, video marketing, email marketing, Facebook advertising, I think because I had basically just come from being a sales guy, uh, I just thought of it very differently. Like, as you know, like <clears throat> when we would get a Quicken Loans lead versus a Lending Tree lead, you know, remember how they used to have us opt in, like wait yeah. for the calls. And they did that because there was a radio ad about Quicken and they called Quicken versus you get the lower my bills leads right? or you get the bank rate or lending tree leads. And there's like sharks that start surrounding them and going after them. So clearly harder to convert. Oh yeah. So I just always, because I was the one making those calls like you were, I was just right. like, man, I don't like, I do not want to build a funnel <clears throat> that creates a 99 to one world. I I'd rather have less leads that are higher quality, that know me, that like me, that trust me, that think I'm sharp. And the way that I did that was just putting out content for free at this point for more than a decade. I've sort of gone from blogs to books, you know, mm -hmm. um, I would love to go from YouTube to Netflix. You know what I mean? I'm always trying to level up my stuff, but right. Yeah. I, the reason I wrote the book to answer your question directly is because marketing and sales are these really big, different types of people and departments. The synergy yeah, is so awful. Like I just did a training for the number one EXP team in the world. Okay. Veronica Figueroa. Oh yeah. I know Veronica. I went in to do the certification for her team. Day one, there's 23 people there. They're salespeople. It was like a different energy. Right. Day two, when there was three marketing people, it's just different. Like it's the creative totally. people and then it's the chatty people. Like, and it's so different that they sit in different parts of the building. They have different KPIs that they think are important. And so the conversion code was written to say, listen, first of all, sales, you need to sit in the corner because if we don't have anybody to call, you don't have a job. So just wait a second. Right. 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 You're not first because if we don't have leads, and that's one thing you got to give quick and credit for. We have leads every day, my man, every day oh, leads yeah. coming in. So I built it from left to right where it's like, here's the sort of modern and new way to build out a marketing machine. That marketing machine is going to create a lot of leads that you're not used to getting. So here's that sort of technology people process middle piece, which is what you guys do to go from lead to appointment. And then, oh, by the way, these are internet leads. These ain't your friends. This ain't your referrals. This ain't your past clients. Right. These are freaking people you don't know. Like they hang up on you. They don't really even want to be talking to you. It's different. And it's so true. then part three was sort of back to the boiler room and, and the conversation. And I was thinking about this the other day. I think I might have written like the only or at least one of the only books that is actually a marketing and a sales book, which is weird. Yeah. And maybe that's why it does so well. You know what I mean? Well, and I think too, just from reading your your first book, and of course, I mean, I I have not had the pleasure yet of reading the second book, but I am going okay. to. I yeah. I will order it, uh, it because it's well. I'm going to make it. at least one sale today, Matt. I'm going to at oh, least I, get one copy sold. It was worth it. Absolutely, absolutely. So as soon as this call, I mean, as soon as this call is done, I'm going to be on it, and yeah. I'm excited to be about it because I know that from the first book that you wrote, a lot of it, even though there were some very basic tenets about and it was very applicable to the times. I love mm -hmm. the fact that you updated it and not yeah. to say that that book isn't timeless because it really is because the core tenants, the core principles of mm -hmm. sales and mm -hmm. selling mm -hmm. really doesn't change, but the marketing and you're right. I agree with you wholeheartedly. If you don't have marketing in place, mm -hmm. if you don't have lead generation in place, you can only do, can you do cold calling? Absolutely. Does it work? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. but it is, agonizing it mm -hmm. is a little more painful and mm -hmm. you have to change the way that you think about that side of the business mm -hmm. you've done cold calling before i'm sure yeah yeah man i work for a company called dial america they just gave you the phone book like yep. just start like literally dial america think about that I and love it. it was one of these places where they were selling like hey we'll give you two two free tickets round trip anywhere in the u.s if you sign up for a credit card and you, it was a script and there was this chunk. There was like this chunk that yep. you had to word, read word for word on, on this recorded line. And if they interrupted you at all to ask a question during that, 
which was basically the terms of service, like at the end of a pharmaceutical commercial. Right. If they stopped you at all, you had to take it from the top, get the whole thing again recorded uninterrupted. I'm sure that an attorney, lawyer, judge is oh, the reason yeah. that they do that. And yeah, man, cold calling is is miserable. Um, and I've been blessed because Quicken did a good job with leads. And I worked for this guy, Lou Perlman. The leads were great at his company. At Curator, our leads are great, you know, that that come in because of Jimmy and the water cooler and the book. And, you know, they're they're ready to work with us. And so I hope, and you're right, sales doesn't change as quick as marketing. I don't, I don't want to miss that point. Right. When I rewrote the book, there's over a hundred additional pages. There's 57 new visuals. Like it's a new book, but the first section with marketing changed a lot, like a lot, a lot. The middle section and the, in the sales section, you're right. That, that is much more fundamentals blocking and tackling. Like, guess what? Six years later, you should still follow up with leads quickly. Guess what? Right. Six years later, you got to call them more than once. Right. Right. Like So, and then obviously the conversation, like you said, sales is uh, much more stable, but what was cool on the sales side, honestly, Matt was like the technology that is in place now. I mean, when we had Lola, you know, like at Quicken, they had a custom CRM and oh yeah, I forget what it was called, but they had this online portal where you could go to these situations and hear a recording and it would be like the number one banker in the company overcoming the social security objection. And that was insanely helpful for me, the way that I learn. Um, and so there's tools like that now that every company can use, like Gong and like Chorus. There's several of them. They plug into Zoom and they will actually give you this data that you could never get before about sales calls the way you could normally get marketing data. So there's, I would say in the sales section, it's just kind of like really cool to quantify like we talk about digging deep and asking great questions and making it a long conversation or else it's not going to become a, a deal. Well, 54% yeah. of a conversation with a top salesperson is the other person talking. So like true. and a ba bad salesperson, they're talking 75% of the call. So that to me was the most fascinating was like all this like boiler room, Mark Maisie, Dan Gilbert, you know what I'm saying? Like that type of just coaching that made sense. Now there's the science behind it and there's the data to back it up, which, which I think is really empowering. It is. What, what location were you at, by the way? I meant to ask that of you. I, I was at the Quicken Loans in Cleveland. I think we were in the same web center. It just, wow. we were just sort of on different sides yeah. of the freaking cubicle That's crazy. Farm. You know what I mean? Right. That's so crazy. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, when I was there, I mean, yeah, Mark Maisie was the AVP, I believe, mm -hmm. or he was, mm -hmm. uh, RVP yeah, I mean, something like that. Yeah, right? RVP, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy because there were so many amazing takeaways mm -hmm. from there. And mm -hmm. I will say that the way they ran their model, I mean, they're constantly providing leads. They're good, solid, mm -hmm. high quality leads. Mm -hmm. What would you say, though? I mean, of course, I've always felt like my past experiences have given me the knowledge that I need to just go way above and beyond in business today. What mm -hmm. would you say are some things that, you know, for somebody that's just looking to get into, maybe just get into real estate, just get into mortgage, you know, of mm -hmm. course now, I mean, rates have gone up, things have uh, shifted quite a bit. Yeah. But we'll, what would you say to, you know, for advice to give to somebody that's first looking to get into this? Well, what's fascinating is that the type of person that I would start to think of, as you said that, especially on the real estate agent side is so different because the, yeah. the creators are doing great. The personal brands, the content marketing, the YouTube channels, the TikTok channels. You know, if you look at what Brad McCollum's doing in Calgary with his YouTube mm -hmm. channel as a luxury real estate agent, if you mm -hmm. look at Glenda Baker on TikTok and what she's done for her brand and business, the Matt Leonetti is a super funny guy. He's part of broke agent media. He has a podcast called over ask and he does skits. He did the zombie skit the other day. Like he did a skit with Drake. That was hilarious. Like they're, you know, the broke agent, right. Is memes. They got this massive following now. So I think there's this sort of different persona than in the past where in the past, I think it would have been more, 
you know, somebody that was stronger on the sales side, you know, somebody maybe that was really good with service. You hear that from a lot of top agents. Now it's almost like <clears throat> who is the best at sort of becoming an influencer in their market through amazing content marketing. Like you might want to go to the theater school to find the next realtor. You see what I'm saying? Which is yeah. different. So I, I, and those folks are awesome and they give good service too. You know what I mean? Love they it. can learn how to be good at sales too. But Brad McCollum's the number one luxury agent in Calgary in 24 months from YouTube, but he's charismatic. He's great on camera. He's kind of got that look like he, he kind of looks like a cartoon. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I mean that in a flattering way. Like, yeah. so to me, when I, when you ask that, I'm like, man, I think that's sort of, that's sort of the future is that, you know, the people that are creators of content, uh, regularly are going to probably be that sort of next kind of superstar. I love that. It's all about consistency. I mean, I think mm -hmm. that really is what drives it home and guys for everybody here again, that's watching. If you're just tuning on, check out this book conversion code and you get one and two actually does one it, it, no get they should both. get yeah they should get two um yeah, get two everything that's amazing in one is still there and then there's a huge layer on top of it but you, you would start with two yeah okay even better it, well yes. so get guys go in grab the book you're not going to be sorry like i said i read the first original one it was amazing phenomenal book there's so much value in there and you know chris for the company you have now curator uh which of course is a company for lead gen mm -hmm. uh, there there are i remember from experience we've had a couple of clients that we called on their leads they were very good leads mm -hmm. if, if you don't mind sharing uh mm -hmm. how are you guys are you guys creating these leads through social media i mean is that more or less what you guys do is that like a paperclip type of deal for anyone that's interested and in, in looking at curator well i would say you know yes and no we basically are trying to be omni-channel you know which is mm. really hard for real estate agents to do so it's sure. almost like even if you've got facebook ads running you know are you doing google as well and then even if you have those two in place what are you doing on insta you're making right. all these videos of your listings, but you don't have anything happening on YouTube. And right. oh, by the way, email marketing is actually where you actually drum up all the actual sales opportunities and you're not creating any content. Like it's, you know what I'm saying? So we're, I, I would say the reason some of the leads, not all of them, of course, yeah, but sure. the reason some of the leads are high quality is because people care about things like web design. People care about things like, expertise uh people work with brands that stay top of mind through social and email there, there's there's so much more to it than the leads themselves whereas in my opinion in many cases with with a google only strategy mm -hmm. you don't really get that upside of building your brand zillow is building their brand not yours when somebody goes to google and looks for homes and they end up on your idx and then you force them to register that's not building your brand that's building your database you know that's building right. your uh lead flow so i think to me the best leads are the ones that like it when you call uh know who you are when you call uh right. are looking forward to the call call you God forbid. Right. So right. I would say it's funny because we get people so many listings, but we actually don't get people that many seller leads. Right. And so that, but the, the agents that like track and they ask, and it's like, how'd you find out about us? Why'd you reach out to us? Like, man, it's magical. You know what I mean? But right. it, it's, I would say ultimately, uh, and by the way, I don't want to shit on Google. Uh, you know, Google pay-per-click leads are some of the highest quality leads by far. And we totally respect that space, have hired experts in that space, admire some of the pioneers, Tiger Lead, Boomtown, K Sync, like, uh, but let's be honest, they're doing social media now too. So it's almost like we, we just sort of flipped, like we did social for however long and they did search for however long. And then 
they basically said, we got to quit ignoring social. And we said, we got to quit ignoring search. Uh, and right. I think that's where the future is, Matt, is being everywhere the right way. You know what I mean? Not just sort of checking the box. Um, and a lot of that doesn't scale. So just like you have people calling leads, human beings, you know, we have people creating marketing, deploying marketing. Uh, there, there's a, a handcrafted uh, IPA approach to Curator. Uh, we're not Bud Light. We're not, you know, right. we're, we're not the company that scales to to the masses. We don't even do enterprise deals with brokerages or franchises. Like uh, we're sort of an agency for agents is kind mm -hmm. of the way that a lot of smart people describe us that we've paid money to tell us what we are. Um, but yeah, I, I love doing it. And I hope everybody at least adds that part to their business if it's missing now. What, whether it's us or not, you already says 22 bucks. Everything I know is in the book. Everything right. we do at Curator for people is in the book. Because in many cases, what you learn as you learn is that you need to outsource the execution. I mean, listen, okay. I'm great at this stuff. I write books about it. You know what I'm doing right now, Matt? I have a social media person that helps me. I have a TikTok and a Reels editor that helps me. I have a researcher that goes and finds stuff for me. I'm about to get a copywriter and an ad specialist. Like, I'm willing to outsource it. You're not. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Right. So, and I know which buttons to press. Technology doesn't confuse me. I enjoy being an ads manager. Like, I don't mind that. But at the right. end of the day, you know, it's not a, do I do it or does it not happen? You know, bring in an expert and Upwork yeah. and Behance and Dribble and companies like yours, like the ability to outsource uh, has never been better. Um, and there's a high cost to insourcing. You know, if you if you outsource and it works, then it's like, OK, now it might be worth hiring somebody local to put the headset on, too. You know what I mean? Yes. That's, that's kind of how yes. I look at it is once something works crank it up. So for us, at least with Curator, we have a podcast called The Water Cooler. The Water Cooler worked. So we cranked it up. We bought $1,000 mics. We got cameras shooting us from five different angles. We got lights. You know what I mean? We got I got a mixing board on my desk, dude. You know what I mean? I don't even know how to use a mixing board. I got a mixing board. <laughs> so because it. it worked. So then we grabbed it and we did it more. We didn't right move on to the next thing per se. Same thing with the book. Why did I do part two? Because part one was killer for business. Oh yeah. You know, so 100%. it's like, why not do part two? It's past and proven. So right. th that's something I actually try to advise people is like 80 to 90% past and proven stuff that you're working on. 10 to 20% stuff that's exciting and new and who gives a shit if it works. Run a Spotify ad, put right. an ad on Hulu, do a TikTok ad. You know what I mean? Do some YouTube pre-roll stuff and just have fun with it. You know, don't go into it. Like if it doesn't work, we got to pull the plug, <laughs> you know? Like, right, right. I, I hate that mindset. So I call it budgeting for FOMO. Like <laughs> have that emergency 10, 15, 20% fund right. that you're just wasting. That's your throw it against the wall money. Right. Something sticks, you know? And then it comes over to the 80% side and it becomes something we put money and time into long term. Um, that's how I approach it, at least for myself. I love it. You you went through a lot. So I'm going to unpack a couple of things for everybody that's watching and make sure that they understand. So we're talking about search and social. So mm -hmm. search is Google search. It's search based on keywords, searching based on what someone is actively looking for. Mm -hmm. When you say, you know, search versus social, though, social, you're talking about more face to camera, doing like a market update or uh, doing something like a fun event in the community. Am I right on well, I that? I mean, social media, no, so social media. So Facebook ads, Instagram ads, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok. Like, that's what I mean by social. Got but it. it's related because some of the stuff you just mentioned, the videos, the community stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what does the best on social? That kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. So that's where it's sort of like, you don't have to do SEO or pay-per-click, but if you do 
right. social, what you're really saying is we're going to do content marketing. You know, right. uh, if you want social to sort of work, you have to put good content out. And so maybe instead of putting, you know, let's say, let's say it's a thousand bucks for the platform you have. Let's mm -hmm. say it's a thousand bucks for the leads a month. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's, you know, another 2000 for s somebody, you know, to call the leads, whether it's a company like yours or somebody that you hire right? Um, to call the leads. So we're at $4,000, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's, it's okay to take that and say, you know what, I'm going to put $4,000 this time, but it's not like socials free and that's paid. Like you have to take that 4k and say, okay, well, 1500 of it's going to go into three videos for listings that are amazing. And then another 1500 of it is going to go into the actual ad campaigns for those videos. And now we still got a thousand bucks left. And for that, we're going to boost a few of our reviews and we're going to do, you know, a couple of reels and we're going to pay somebody to write uh, the ultimate guide to choosing the right neighborhood in Charlotte. Right. So that is, I think, what I've always done and probably maybe too much, but I've just always been more than happy to pay to play on social. I didn't ever think oh, yeah. of it like, Oh, social's free and search is paid. No, like social's paid. <laughs> so I think most right. people now they get that, but the probably the unlock for people that are not basic at this point, the people watching your show or listening that are kind of already executing, you know, I think the unlock would be, not so much like spend money on social ads. It would be spend money on creating content. I love spend that. money on yeah. the writer, spend money on the actor, spend money. You see what I'm saying? That I think is what most people now are going to be working towards because the reality is we're not all creators. We're not all creative. We're not all good on camera. We're not all good at TikTok. Like right. um, the same way that somebody would pay a pay-per-click person or pay an ISA company. They can pay someone to make a video for their business. You know what I mean? It's it's okay. Right. And you're either exchanging dollars or hours. And that's what people have to always understand. And I've always explained that to folks. Hey, look, you're either mm -hmm. going to exchange a ton of hours and a ton of time. And mm -hmm. you've got the hours and time, which most folks, if they're at a high level, they really, they don't have the hours or time they need to take the dollars and exchange them for someone who is a pro in the space. Because they mm -hmm. say that it takes 10,000 hours of doing anything to become an absolute professional. I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. I don't have 10,000 hours to become really good at, you know, writing ad copy. That's not mm -hmm. even my, totally not my forte. No. <laughs> so my point is, is that you've always, you're right. You want to hire and put the right people in the right places. And for everybody mm -hmm. that's looking to do that, looking to increase your skill set, you definitely want to get the conversion code chasing and not attract, chasing, attracting clients. Uh, you, you're not going to go wrong with that. Stop chasing leads and start attracting clients. That yeah. is the, uh, you don't want to get the first one. I want to make sure I give everybody mm -hmm. the, because this one is, this one you built off of it, which is amazing. And I'm mm -hmm. excited. As soon as we get off of here, that's going to be the first thing I'm going to get. And I'm actually, I'm just finishing up the book, The Warrior, The yeah. Warrior's Way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm almost done with that. Once I finish right. that, this is going to be my next book. So I'm excited. Yeah. For that. You're going to love it, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, Chris, I want to thank you so much for, for being on here. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we close things out? No, thank you for having me on. It's great to sort of do a show with a quick and loans alumni, as you know, right. uh, some of the best salespeople in the world work there. Uh, you know, I can rattle off dozens of names of oh, yeah. people that were just legendary salespeople that I got to work next to learn from, you know, uh, be on their team, be in their division. Um, and so it's, it's good to see you after all these years, just because, yeah, you know, we're older now, we got a little bit more gray now, but for anybody watching that sort of is more of an employee than an owner, right? Which is, you know, this is, I think, just a good thing to look at where it's like the experience that you're getting and call it corporate America can, can directly carry into entrepreneurship. So, you know, you might not think about it, but while you're taking notes at your current job, what you're actually doing is taking notes for your future business. 
I love that. That's I don't think there's a better closeout than that because you think <laughs> about you think about it like this though. You're absolutely right because no matter what you're doing right now, especially with Quicken, one of the things mm -hmm. I took from Quicken is we had to work like a thousand hours a week. I'm like, well, yeah. you're doing that with entrepreneurship when you first get mm -hmm. started, especially. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of good core tenants and core principles that we both gained from mm -hmm. there, and it was great to to connect with you. Awesome, man. Thanks again. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. And for everybody watching, see you uh, same channel, same place. See you guys.